five two. Okay, so what were you talking about before you got to this point? <coughs> Name anything you've been talking about in this course. Random variables. Okay, random variables. Let's go from there. Now what? Probability distribution. Okay, and what did that look like? Or what is the only case you've done? Okay, that's one. I pulled it up. And what were you talking about on this slide? Um, the mean. Okay, the mean. So first of all, remind me, what does X stand for? Okay, it is random variable, and it's standing for, in this particular case, no. The coin slip 10 times. It's the number of heads. It's the number of heads. So for instance, what does x equal 3 mean to me? The chance of getting 3 heads. Oh, but not the chance. X just means getting, or getting, three, getting heads. 3 heads. Okay. Now, if I wanted to ask you what is the probability of getting 3 heads if I could toss a coin 10 times, where would you go? P of x. So P of 3, which gives you what? 0.117. Okay. So now, what is that? Perfect. We said distribution. How does the piece of x relate to the distribution? If I ask you to graph what this distribution looks like, could you? Okay, so what do you mean by that? Well, yeah, those are the same things. So. It peaks in the middle. Okay, it peaks in the middle. Looking at this, how could you tell me that? At uh, five, it's about even. And then, uh, not even, but you can see how it, it goes, like it gradually slows, and then the probability is less and less to use the time. Okay, so what's it called when we have a figure that looks similar on each side, like a mirror image? It's symmetric. So it's symmetric. And if I ask you to draw, so let's put x's along here. What do you think I should make this axis be? B of x. What would this look like if I just plotted the points? Bell curve. Okay, but just in points, right? It would look like, oh, uh, I don't really like to start zero here, but I guess we can start zero here. So it's small, and then it would get bigger, 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 and then it would drop off. Drop off. Okay, so are we up to the speed now? Yes, and this is what we're meaning by our bell curve here. But really right now, it's only discrete, so it's only points. But you can picture a curve through it. Not exact, but it would be okay for this information. So now we're going on to the next thing. If you were playing this game for money, which you don't, of course, because there's no gambling at BMI, okay, what would you want to know about this game? Right, but does anybody really have this memorized in their head? Like, how many of you play poker, not for money, just for fun? Do you really have all those probabilities measured just in your head and you just pull them up? Yeah, I didn't think so. So, yes, this is great and nice, but it's probably not what you're asking yourself when you go play a game. So what are you going to ask yourself if you're going to play a game? How do you win? Okay, how do you win? I like that. Okay, good. Now, what could be some information here that would tell you about maybe winning, losing, or anything like that? Probability. Um, the highest probability of winning. It does. So if you had to guess, which number would you pick would be the most likely to occur? Five. Five. And why? The probability. highest probability. Wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow sum all this information so we could figure out what we expected to happen if we played this game? Who's really, really unlucky? Yeah, I am too. Okay, who's really, really, really lucky? So you all are in the middle? So we're just the poor people in here? So if we were playing this game where for every time I got ahead, I'd get a dollar, how much money would I win? I'm the unluckiest person in the planet. Zero. Zero, right? And it's possible, it can happen but I wouldn't win anything. Okay, if you were the luckiest person on the planet, how many heads would you get? 10. 10, okay. But 
the chances of that happening, probably that happening, are very, very small. So for all, except for us, we're exempt. For the rest of the class, what's going to happen to you? It falls somewhere in between. Where do you think you probably fall most often? Five. Five. Five, or I would actually go a little bit wider, maybe. Sports. Sports. Okay. So we're getting at this idea. Okay, sorry. Those were your answers from I don't know what question from last lecture. So we're getting at this idea of expected value. So expected value is the um, the mean of the outcomes. You have this formula, and I'm sure you've worked with this formula before. In fact, you probably did it when you were working with frequency distributions and you were calculating means. Does that sound familiar? From I don't know what chapter one or two something from a while ago. Does that sound familiar? Where you would take the um, random variable times the probability. How does that look here? Yeah, the slower you are, the more we're going to have to pull out our calculators and actually calculate this. <coughs> Could you calculate this? Yes. How would you do it? You enter the, your values from the chart. And then do what? And add them all up. Add them all up. If I forced you to do this, could you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm not going to force you to do this. But that's how you find your expected value. What would your expected value, um, how would it help you know if you should uh, play the game or not? Wait, so for the formula, you just take like 0 times 0.001, and then you do that for all of the problems, and you add them all up? Yeah, let's put it in your calculator real quick. Let's go back to that table. If you had it in your calculator last class, you could find it. So take 0 times 0 0.001, 1 times 0 0.01, do that all the way down, and tell me what you get. <laughs> we'll do a very dangerous thing. We'll do class by democracy. So we're see yeah, we'll see which answers match. Let me know when you have a solution. What did you notice there? Side, point that out. Okay, so expected value is the outcome we expect to get. When I was asking you when you played this game, so the expected value turned out to be five from doing that. When I was asking you what you expected to get, except for the unlucky people, what do you expect to get? Five. Mm -hmm. So do you see how the expected value is lining up with means? Now, that only works in certain instances. What can you tell? Well, you already told me this. Did you notice how nice and symmetric that curve was down to perfection? Do you think that happens when you have things that aren't perfect symmetric? No, those values will be a little bit different. So your expected value tells you when you should play a game or not. Actually, it tells you a lot more, but for gambling purposes. It tells you when you're playing. Okay, going on, this is kind of fun. You and I are the outliers, so we're going to have interesting things. So um, this is just, it is literally a rule of thumb. 
Um, it tells you how far away you should be from the mean, the average. So if I look at a bell curve, I'm going to center my curve here. And I'm going to do a regular curve, and then I'm going to put my discrete points on it. So you can see where the points are on it. Okay, this is the mean. Now, can anybody describe standard deviation to me? Deviates the deviation between each point. Close. Is how far away you are from the mean. That's what we use it. We use it as a measure of how far you are from the mean. But it goes back to the deviation of and then each point, the, the average deviation. <laughs> okay. So I was looking for the variation among the sets. So we're getting at the same thing. And how many deviations do you usually go out when you're working with things? Two. 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 Okay, so if you got one deviation, we have mu plus um, sigma, and we have mu minus sigma. So that would be one deviation to the left or right. Okay, and then we go out two deviations, so mu plus two sigma and mu minus two sigma. So this goes out even further. So this rule of thumb tells you that um, this is to identify unusual values. Where do you think unusual values would fall? Outside. Outside. So in these very, very tippy tails. Now, if you're an unlucky person, you happen to be in those tails a lot. Okay? And if you're a super lucky person, you might happen to be in those tails a lot. But most of the population will fall in between two standard deviations. So if you were playing a game with somebody, and they always toss 10 heads out of 10, what would you start thinking? Yeah, it's not a fair coin, right? What about if they always got just, you know, maybe they, they're a little bit not so obvious and used a double-headed coin. Maybe they're less obvious. What if they always got nine heads out of 10? Still would be suspicious. Now what if sometimes they got four, sometimes they got five, sometimes they got one, sometimes they got nine, what would you expect then? It's probably more fair. So this is just a rule of thumb to identify things that look odd. Um, you can do this for different um, ways. You don't always have to look at this. You can look at, at a chart. So um, it's just kind of something that comes naturally a little bit. If the probability of getting um, everything completely heads or completely tails is really, really, really high, you might start thinking it's an unfair game, or if it's a fair game, you might think that there's something wrong. So the probabilities can be used to also determine that too. Any questions on this? Okay, let's go on what I studied. I studied binomial distributions. <coughs> so this is the start of chapter five, three. Okay, um, we're not going to get all the way through this today. I, we're probably not going to get as far as he would like today. Um, but we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get through the binomial worksheet. So uh, you just did probability distributions, and we just finished them up. We're going to go into a specific type of probability distribution. We're going to go into a binomial distribution. And um, these are kind of fun. Keep in mind, mathematicians don't always bias, so math is always fun. But there are certain things about this that are more fun than some of the other distributions. And that's because I work in biology. So we, we might talk about it if we get time. Um, we're going to work with the binomial distribution for this. Um, they're very, very common. You see them a lot. I just had a whole bunch of students downstairs on true, false, actually try to game this system. It doesn't work. You should really just study for your time. Okay, so binomial distribution, here's what we're going to work with. Um, we're going to have a success and a failure. And P is going to be the probability that you succeed, and F is going to be the probability of a failure. Now, what do you know about the probabilities of success and failures? They're dependent, like they both combine to equal one. Okay, they both combine to equal one, so that means they are starts with the C. Complements. Because mm -hmm. if your choices are success or failure, there's nothing in between, they both have to be complements. 
So another way, if I gave you the probability of success, what do you automatically know? The probability of a failure. What if I gave you the probability of failure? You automatically know the probability of success. So these are complements to one another, and that's used a lot on, um, well, it's used a lot in life. I just have to give you the probability of success, and then you can figure out the rest from there. Okay, so the probability distribution is going to have a few requirements, and here's the first one. You have to have a fixed number of trials. So for instance, if we're playing a game, we have to agree upon when the game ends. After five turns, after four turns, it doesn't matter. It's got to be a finite fixed number of times, which I almost used the last one. Um, the trials must be independent. So that means every single time we go to do a round, there can be no memory of what happened before. It has to be brand new over and over again. So let's talk about cards for a second. How could you make a card game where you drew five cards? Or let's just say drew the top card. You shuffle them and drew the top card. How can you make each time you do that independent, and how can you make it not? You replace the card. Okay, if you replace the card. Why if you replace the card is it independent? The same result doesn't Excellent. Now what happens if you keep that card out? It does change the probability of drawing a certain card. In fact, that card can never be drawn again. So with binomial probabilities, you have to, or binomial distributions, you have to remember that they have to be independent. Okay, let's talk about having children. If you have a girl or a boy the first time you have children, then that you have children yet, but when you get old, um, do you think those are independent? Yes. Why? So the fact that you had a son or a daughter the first time has really no impact on what you're going to have the second time. I'm not the unluckiest. I know a couple that's trying for a girl and they have five boys. So mm -hmm. they're going to keep trying. They're trying. So they're, they're um, I don't know. They're getting old. They're going to have to work on that. Um, but it doesn't matter what happens before. Each time a new one. Um, each trial has to be either a success or failure. You can't have any betweens. So have you ever played with a um, child, for instance, like Candyland or Shoots and Ladders? Okay, you know how sometimes when the kid wins and you tell him, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's a win for us all, right? And then when the kid loses, you're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's kind of a win for us all, and you uh, convince them that winning and losing is not the end of the world. No, in binomial probability distributions, winning and losing is the end of the world, that's it. There's no niceness, it's cut and dry, there's nothing more to it don't have to console anybody, it's just how it is. And the last thing is, the probability of a success has to remain the same throughout. So you can't get better at doing something and you can't get worse at doing something as you go along. You have to remain at the same level each time. You've seen this before. Biology. Yes. So one person. Okay. Well, brand new stuff for us. Okay, here we're going to do a procedure. It should look familiar. Tossing a coin ten times, we're going to count the numbers of heads. Okay, without looking, is this binomial distribution? Yes. Does it fit the rules? Yes. Yes. So we have a fixed number of trials, ten. It's finite. We have each trial has two outcomes, a head or tail which we're going to define, which is a success or a failure, but we have that. Um, why are the trials independent? Looking ahead doesn't affect looking in the Yeah, the coin resets. Each time you do it, the coin doesn't have no memory of what happened before. And is the probability the same each time? Yep. As long as you don't flip the, or as long as you don't exchange the coin with a different one, you're fine. So this is um, a binomial, and it looks really, really familiar. What's the probability of flipping ahead? Half, one out of two possibilities. And what about a tail? Okay, for this one, we're going to define um, successes as being a head and tails as being a failure. You could do it the other way around, but that's what we're going to stick with. Okay, now, we're going to draw, see, I wish that answer one up there. We're going to draw um, five cards from a shuffle deck without replacements. So some of these things still work. We have a set number of trial five. 
Um, each trial has an outcome. We're going to count, figure out if it's a spade or not. If it's a spade, that's a success. If it's not, that's a failure. But what's wrong with the independents? They're not, because we're not replacing the cards as we go. Um, and what does that do to this last one that should also be in red, too? It does. The probability of, of being dealt a spade in the first hand is going to be very, very different than after you've already taken out three or four cards. So it's going to change your probabilities if you go to. So this asks, how can you change this to make it binomial? Replace Replace the cards. So, oops, that didn't work. Didn't that work? Oh, no, we just turned it. So we're going to start going into the math notation. So n is going to denote the number of fixed Try the fixed number of trials that you have, and that's lowercase x. X is going to denote the number of successes. So in worst case scenario, how many successes do you get? None, right? It could be a total failure. Yeah, there's no laughter. <laughs> you don't have to have any successes. You can get zero. And what's the maximum number of successes you can get? Ten for, yeah, if we're drawing 10, but in the generic case, it's just going to be n. You could get a success every single time. So x is going to go between 0 or n. It's going to have to be a whole number. It's going to be the number of times that you succeeded. p is going to note the probability of success in a single trial, a single game. Or a single flip, I should say, at this point. q is going to be the probability of a failure. Remind me how p and q are related? Complements. So P and Q must add to 1. Um, P of X is going to denote the probability of getting exactly X number of wins out of N games. Ready for the scary slide? Actually, I love this slide. Okay. Because I was just down there. Okay. With students, this is like from real life situation. Don't do this on a test. Just study for a test. Okay. Students are given four multiple choice questions, and each question has three possible answers. If the student guesses for each answer, we want you to tell us, um, is this going to work or not? And the answer, of course, is always, don't do it, study through your test. Okay, so here's the following experiment. We have n equals 4 because we have four multiple choice questions. What's the probability of getting a single question correct? One third, right? You can get, uh, the probability of picking the correct answer is 1 out of 3. If you don't know any information about these tests. X is going to be the number of wrong answers. Does this work? Because what's a success on taking it to test? Correct. Yeah, not getting the wrong answer. So what's, what's bad about this entire problem? But what are we counting the wrong answer as? Success. Well, we're counting as excess down here, but what's the probability of getting a wrong answer here? Two out of three. Two out of three right? So we've mixed up our probabilities. We have a probability of success, but then we called actually a failure of success, and that didn't work. How could you fix this? Two options. Uh, take away one of the three possible answers? Mm, no, it just changes our probability. Switch the one third with two thirds. Okay, so you could say now that a success is actually failing the question, and then your probability of success would be two thirds. What's another way to change this problem so it works? Make the number of right answers is that wrong? Yeah, make x be the number of correct answers. So you have to be consistent. Your probability of success has to go with the number of successes you get. You can't flip them. Am I going too slow? Okay, some of you look tired today. I thought I might be boring you. Okay. It's been a tough week. It's been a tough week. I agree. So we need to make sure that X relates to the number of successes and P rate relates to the probability of success per time. Okay, this is kind of interesting. This is hand weighty. Um, this is very hand weighty. Okay, so. If you have something, for instance, if we had a deck of cards that was really, really, really large, like give me a really big number. 
That's not big. I can count to 100. You have to give me a big number. Two million. A million, okay. I've never seen a million, so that's good. Don't have a million dollars. Okay, so let's say I have a million cards, and you draw a single card off of it, and you don't replace it. Yeah, is that going to affect the probability of drawing, for instance, for instance, or for instance a spade? No. Not as much as we were in a regular deck, right? So this is the rule of thumb, that's the 5% rule. So if your um, population is so large that you are sampling less than 5% of it, in some schools it's okay to call it intended. I'm not of that school. I disagree with that. But in some schools, it's okay. Yeah, I'm kind of a picky mathematician. Okay. Well, I understand the reason for it. Because like I work with mathematical biology, so I work with um, respiratory infections. And if I want to give people respiratory infections, well, you can't do that. There's something called ethics, right? You can't just walk in here and give you all respiratory infections and ask if you're going to survive or not. That's just kind of cool. So I do understand that sometimes you have very few cases that you have to work with, and sometimes you have to deal with it. But if you don't have to, I wouldn't do it. So let's go on to examples. You're going to tell me if this is binomial or not. And then six of you are going to defend your answer on the board. I'll write up the numbers for you. When you have an answer, you can write yes or no. We want to know, is it a binomial distribution? And then you're going to have to determine n, p, and q, just write them out. So let's see, one, two, three. Have more chalk if you need more chalk. Can we just go on? Yeah, do you have one? Did you pick one favorite already? Oh, yeah. Okay, come on and put that. You're your first one. You get to pick. Uh, be careful not to bump the video camera. You can go up more at a time. Oh, you have to tell me what N, P, and Q are. Oh, wait. No, nope. uh, no, it's not. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. I was going to be a little tough. But you're going to have to defend your answer. Okay. Okay. Another brave soul. Okay, good. We're yeah, halfway there. Two. Okay. Two's taken, so you have to pick a different one. Three more people. Mm -hmm. yep. Of course, I noticed you leave right after calling people up. <coughs> that probably Very not, convenient. It's not a coincidence. Yeah, not a coincidence. Sorry, it is a coincidence. No, no, I'm thinking not a coincidence. Okay, three more people. Be brave. It's the worst that can happen. We just need one more brave soul. Do you want to do six? Yeah, if you if it's yes, then and I'll well I guess nobody else is. Six, 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 six. Nobody wants four? Yeah, without a place that you're taking it out, you're not going to get back. Yeah, without a place that you're taking it out, you're not going to get back. Yeah, without a place that you're taking it out, you're not going to get back. Yeah, without a place that you're taking it out, you're not going to get back. Yeah
Okay, this is getting better. There we go. We stand up. It's good exercise too. Think of all the calories you burn just walking that distance. Okay, so um, shall we see if we're correct or not? Yes. Okay, why is one no? Because there's no success or failure. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things you're calculating, not just two things, right? Success or failure. Okay, why is two yes? Um, because they do have success or failure, and there's like this number of trials, they're all in the Okay, and um, here, which would be, N is going to be what? For number two. N is going to be 100. Okay, P is going to be a little bit hard, and I actually don't know baseball enough to know what the probability of hitting a ball is. Mine would be very low. Okay, and what other thing could you maybe um, tell me maybe about X? What would X be? Yeah, no, just in words. It's going to be the number of what? Successes. Which in this case is going to be? Hits. Number of hits. So a hit is going to be a success. And then the probability would depend on the baseball player. Okay, three was no because? And what's changing each time then? Uh, the probability of The probabilities. Excellent. Okay, uh, four was yes. Why is four yes? Okay, and um, we have a finite number of trials. Yeah. And what's the success here? Uh, okay, aces. Um, so uh, we can actually do that. So for four, n is going to be five. Um, x is going to be the number, or sorry, x success is going to be. Uh, getting an ace, and what's the probability of getting an ace in a deck of cards? Four out of 52. Okay, but that can also reduce, well, I'll take it. What does that reduce down to? One out of 13. One out of 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have, okay, asking 10 people if they voted for a Democrat. We said yes. Yes. Okay, so how are you going to do that? Wouldn't it be like the hotel Okay. All right. Well, okay. So we have we have a set number of people we're asking. So we have a set number of trials and uh, ten here for n. Um, we have a success and failure. In this case, a success is going to be a Democrat. And then, what are you going to tell me about P? Remember something about P that had to be true for every single trial? Must remain the same. Must remain the same. If you ask ten people how they voted, is the probability they vote or the probability that they voted Democrat going to be identical for every single one? Yes. Yeah. Well, it like if you use data from like say like, like voting like how we voted like 2012, was like 46 percent of people voted for Democrats. Like, you know, for like a 46% sense that that will let some people you ask for a different credit. Um, so. but, so let's see, I'm from Utah, or not from Utah, I spent seven years in Utah. Um, how does Utah normally vote? Red. Okay, I lived in Salt Lake City. How does Salt Lake City normally vote? Blue. So does it location matter? Yeah, yeah. If you take it from a different from each location, like if you just ask it, like you said, or whatever. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's ask a different question. So let's say I voted Democratic in the last election. Is it guaranteed that I'm going to do that again? No. Okay. If I go to the next election, so next year, is it guaranteed that I'm going to vote however I voted last year the same? No. So what's happening each time? a person votes, it really may not depend on a party, it may depend on the persons. Well a person, but it may depend on oh, okay. issues and the candidates and other things that will change 
your um, point of view. So that one, we might have to get a sad face on that one. It's okay though. What about rolling a die six times and counting the numbers of evens? Yes. Okay, why is that by no means? It's a uh, it's fixed number of trial. Okay. What's a success? So success is the uh, even number. Even. Probability of success? Three half, six, one half. Okay. One half and probability of failure. So here are the answers. Um, oh, this says it is a binomial. I was wrong with number five. Um, the probability of success does not change. I'm going to ask him to talk about that one because I might have confused you. Uh, number five. I apologize if I have uh, for that. And I'm confused too. So I will ask him about that and I'll make sure he brings that up when he talks, when he sees you on Monday. So that will be clear there. Um, did we get the rest of them right? C. C. Okay. Going on, um, this is a demo that should work. Has anybody ever played Plinko? It's on a game show. I don't know which oh, one. Oh, is it that thing where you drop the bowl? Yes. yes. And it goes. Our Java is thinking about it. anywhere to begin. So, um, we have bins that the ball can drop in, and this is kind of fun. Let's see if I can make it big. Okay, so how many bins would you like? Okay, so we're leaving it alone. We have 11 bins because we have zero. What do you want the probability that you go to the left or the right to be? Leave it at 50. Leave it at 50? Okay, and the speed just is how fast it goes. So if I start this, what do we expect is going to happen? Where do we expect most of the balls are going to fall? Four and six. Four and six? Okay. There's a whole bunch of balls. It's going to start tallying in here. change the probability? Um, well, actually clear. Don't start this up. Let's go down to a probability of 15. Okay. So let's run it and tell me what's happening. Oh, I didn't clear it. Sorry. Oh, I didn't clear it. I didn't clear it. Look to see where the new ones are going. Is this still a binomial? No. Okay, why do you think not? Oh, no. <coughs> so here, this is kind of weird. When I changed it from five to six, what is my what is my success? Mm, let me ask this a different way. If I change this from instead of 0.5 to a different point, what would happen? So let's go up here and change it to 0.85. What do you think would happen? Okay. And were you correct? So what is changing 0.85 and point fifty? Like if we're splitting between 85 and 15, what's that doing? 
Probability of success. So now I ask you, what is x? What is success in this case? Like right now, a success would be? Going to the right. Yep, going to the right. So if you have a high rate of success, what should happen? Right. Or high probability of success, you should have more successes. When I went down to 15, what happened? My probability of success was very, very low. And so most of the time, the balls ended up in the the lower bit, the bends on the left. So is this binomial? Yes. I did change the probability. We've run it three different times. We've done three different um, complete resets. Although it's not, on my computer it actually reset this. I don't know why it's not working here. I tried it on my laptop. Oh, stop. Oh. Okay, we're closing. I know they keep coming, they don't. So would you agree when it was 50% that it was binomial? Yeah. But then when we changed the probability of success, all of a sudden we didn't agree with that being binomial. Is there a clause that says the probability of success has to be 50%? No, it doesn't. It's 50% in fair games, but it doesn't have to. So to figure out binomials, we actually have a formula that tells us if it's 50%, you're pretty familiar with it, but when I went to the 0.15 and the 0.85% for my or probability for my success, it's not the same. So this is going to tell me the probability of getting exactly x successes out of n trials with the probability of success being p and the probability of failure being q. Have you seen formulas like this before? Oops. So do you know how to work with it if I ask you to throw one up here and come do it at court? Oh, it got quiet all of a sudden. So what should happen? Well, let's try this example. So notice I used this number already, 85. So there's an 85 probability that um, adult knows of Twitter. Okay. So a success is going to be knowing of Twitter, and a failure is going to be not knowing what Twitter is. Okay. The binomial probability can be used to figure out if you randomly select, select five adults if they are if they know about Twitter or not. So I want you to tell me what's the probability of getting exactly three out of five adults that know Twitter. So how could we do this? Okay, well, nobody said plug it into the formula. Plug it into the formula. And that gives you a beautiful number, right, that you can all just pull out of your head. Well, where did you get 10 from the bottom? Where did I get which from? 10. Oh, down here? Oh, is that what? You have to figure yeah. out this. Mm -hmm. you have, this is coming from 10. This is the next number is 0 0.85 raised to the third power. And the next number is, uh, oh, the next number is, if you have three successes, how many failures do you have out of five? Two. Two. So this is really raised to what power? Two. 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 It's written as the, the success minus the, or sorry, the total minus the success for the failures. Okay, there's another way you can do this, although I think this way looks really beautiful. This is a pretty way. You can do it on your calculator. So pull out your calculators. From your calculators, you have to go to second bars to go to distributions, and you have to scroll down really, really, really far. Um, by the time you get to zero and A, you'll see a binomial PDF. Okay. What's the difference in the PDF versus the CDF? Have you got to those yet? Okay, use the PDF, and then I'm gonna do something different. If you put it in, what answer do you get? You have to put it in in a specific order. It has to be your number of trials, your probability of success, and how many trials you wanna succeed at. Did you get this 1.38? Yes. Okay. 
Now, for fun, put in and use one below it, the CDF. That's not on the slides. Did you get the same answer? What did you get? A bigger or smaller answer? A bigger answer. Okay, so let me see here. I have asked you to find the probability that x equals, well, the probability of exactly three exact successes. Does anybody want to guess what you actually got when you used the CDF? Mm -hmm. But that was a good guess, though. It has to do with three successes. Binom PDF. What does it mean to be cumulative? Okay, so if I cumulatively get three successes, what did I also account for? Not failures. I'm only counting successes. Let me go a different way. Um, what are all the possibilities for successes I could have? How many total successes can I have, starting from the lowest to the highest? Okay, I have a total of five successes in the highest. What's my lowest number of successes I can have? Zero. Zero. Okay, and then I can go one success, two success, or three success. So the cumulative distribution actually gave me the probability that I got at least three, or not, sorry, not at least three, at most three successes. No, oops, wait, I need to write this down. Probability that x is less than or equal to three. So the probability that my successes were at most three. That's what you get there. So that's the difference between the two numbers. The PDF gives you exactly three. And the CDF sums everything up to and including three. So the probability should be high. Any questions? You feel like you're an expert on this? No. No comment? I figured out what I did wrong with the other problem. I was looking at individual variation on this, and why can I not consider individual variations with binomial problems? Because each time the set, the whole game has to be reset. I can't carry anything over from the past, like I was trying to carry stuff over from the past, which is memory, so I was breaking the independence. Yep, I was breaking the independence. And that's where I was. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a good one. You're welcome. Have a good one.